So now with health leaders warning that the Delta variant is responsible for 99% of all new cases, they are urging more people to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Joining us live this morning, virology and immunology expert Dr. Larry Corey with Fred Hutch. Gracious enough to join us again this morning. Dr. Corey, good to see you. So not everyone is on board with this vaccine. We've heard a lot of pushback. We want to hear from uh, one protester in a large group yesterday uh, that formed shortly after the mandate was announced. Listen. I think really we need to think about the fact that we need people in their jobs. We need to give them back their choices and we can't take away their freedoms. I've heard this a lot, Dr. Corey. What's your response to people who say that these vaccine mandates are infringing on their freedom? Well, I also feel that uh, there's a societal obligation that we all have to not take a infectious disease of the magnitude that uh, COVID-19 has on other people to um, unwittingly and um, uh, transmit it to others. So uh, uh, I don't think this is just any more about personal freedom. Um, wearing a mask is um, something physicians have been doing for, you know, months and years and hundreds of years. Um, uh, you're able to breathe, you're able to work. Um, we're wearing it because uh, we've learned that the germ theory uh, went along with operations and masks as well as, well as taking care of people. So um, I, I really don't uh, ascribe to this idea that um, your personal freedom has been taken away by uh, wearing a mask when we know it's a very effective way of preventing a deadly disease. Dr. Corey, let's talk about boosters. That's top of mind for a lot of people uh, this morning because starting next month, millions of Americans will be able to get that third booster shot. There seems to be debate, though, over whether there's enough research to support the need for a third shot. What is the evidence that vaccinated people need a booster? Well, there's a significant amount of evidence to suggest um, that we're starting to see waning immunity and starting to have the uptick um, of vaccine breakthroughs. Now, when they occur, they're mild cases. Um, but this this virus is a, is a formidable foe. And one of the lessons we have learned is that it does take a while to implement a vaccination program. And whatever we do, it's gonna occur in September, it's gonna take October and November. Um, we have seen evidence, especially from the Pfizer vaccine, uh, after the second dose, your levels, let's say, of antibodies are 400. Within seven months, they're down to 40. If we give that booster, they go up to over 2,000. Um, and that is the basis of both the immunology of it and the fact that through Israel and through our own studies that are coming out in our own states, we're seeing increased breakthroughs on the vaccines during the month of July. So you are confident in the research that's going into this need for the third booster. You're confident in what you're seeing. I, I'm confident that we're seeing waning immunity. I'm confident that the um, Delta itself requires higher levels of immunization. Hmm. Um, and I'm confident that you're making a decision that's a, a risk benefit. I'm confident that the third dose is safe. We have lots of data on that. And I'm confident that the third dose raises your immunity to um, essentially a log tenfold higher than when it was after the second dose. So when you look at that, that it's safe, gives you very high levels of immunity. Higher levels of immunity are associated with higher protection. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sound like there's a risk in getting that third shot, really only a benefit. What about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Yeah. What about people who got the J&J &J shot, Dr. Corey? Well, we're in active discussions. I just had a long discussion with the uh, leadership of Johnson & Johnson yesterday. So um, there is a feeling here that um, they also have uh, data that's showing that um, a second dose gives a very nice boost. Um, second dose at the time points where uh, our country is for that boost gives a very um, high level of boost. And they're in discussions with the regulators and us to, about boosting their clinical trial. And, and I think the people of the United States who've had it. So that's an active discussion. What, what worries you the most right now, Dr. Corey? Honestly, I mean, we see the hospitalizations. 25% of all ICU beds in the state are filled with COVID-19 patients. It seems awfully high. Is there, what is the one thing right now that really is concerning you? Well, it, it, this is still an epidemic of the unvaccinated. And it's a preventable disease. You do not have to um, not be vaccinated. or if you, if you get vaccinated, you will not be in the hospital. So it, it, to the people who are unvaccinated, uh, I guess I'm saying to you, this is a strain that uh, more infectious, more rapidly disseminates in the body, um, 
market and is giving us these rates of hospitalization that you showed on the graph. Yeah. And so um, this is preventable. Dr. Corey, thank you so much. We always appreciate your insight and your expertise on this topic yeah. that a lot of people have questions on and is still evolving as we learn more. We'll check within, uh, check in with you hopefully next week a and lot. ask you some more questions. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thanks, Mimi. Thanks, Jake. It's a pleasure to be with Good you. Good to see you again, Dr. Always. Corey.